All right, so buckle up, everybody, because today's deep dive is going somewhere I definitely didn't expect. Canine megasophagus and, well, let's just say a surprising new treatment you sent my way that really caught my eye. Yeah, it's not every day you see Viagra for dogs and think, oh, interesting medical research. You can say that again. My eyebrows practically disappeared into my hairline. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> maybe we should back up a step. For anyone who, like me five minutes ago, isn't quite sure what megasophagus even is. Right, of course. So in the simplest terms, it's a condition where the esophagus, that muscular tube connecting the mouth to the stomach, basically loses its ability to move food down efficiently. So like picture a tube that's supposed to squeeze food down with those muscle contractions, but it's like uh -huh. the signal's not getting through. Exactly. It's like the muscles forget how to do their job properly. And the thing is, this can happen in dogs of any age. Oh, that's right. One of the articles mentioned some pups are actually born with it. That's rough. It really is. Congenital megasophagus, we call that, and the causes for it can be quite different from the time that develops later in a dog's life. But whatever the cause, the consequences for these dogs, it's tough. That's what really stuck with me in these articles, honestly. Imagine your dog, who normally goes blonkers for mealtime, suddenly can't even keep food down. It's heartbreaking. It is. And the research painted a pretty stark picture. Malnutrition, dehydration. I mean, we're talking about a basic need here. And beyond the discomfort, because of all that regurgitation, the food coming back up, there's a very serious risk of aspiration pneumonia. Basically, that's when food or liquid ends up in the lungs. Oh, right. And that can be fatal, can't it? Absolutely. It's a major concern. That's why finding an effective treatment is so crucial for these dogs. And it sounds like what we've tried in the past, while helpful, isn't always a long-term solution. Yeah. The articles you sent mention special diets, adjusting feeding positions. These are all super important, don't get me wrong. They can make a big difference in a dog's comfort and help manage the condition, but... But they don't solve the underlying problem of the esophagus not working the way it should. Precisely. Which brings us to... Well, I think you're eager to dig into that part, aren't you? Oh, you better believe it. This is the part where I had to go back and, like, triple check the article title. We're really talking about Viagra here. The little blue pill <laughs> for dogs. Yep, that's the one. It's definitely not your typical veterinary medicine. You think, okay, before my brain melts, maybe we should uh, break this down a bit. Right, of course. So first things first, we're actually talking about sildenafil, which is the generic name for Viagra. Okay, that makes sense. But still, how on earth, I mean, who looked at a dog with megasophagus and thought, you know what this pup needs? Sometimes it's not so much about making a leap as, well, connecting the dots in a way no one thought of before. All right, so connect the dots for me then. What does sildenafil do that could possibly help with this? It all comes down to what sildenafil does at a molecular level. See, it inhibits this thing called PDE5, which, bear with me here, it's about to get cool. Trust me, I am so here for the cool science. Lay it on me. So, by inhibiting PDE5, sildenafil actually leads to an increase of another molecule in the body, CGMP. Now, CZMP, that's the real MVP here because its whole job is to relax smooth muscles. And last time I checked, the esophagus is basically one big old smooth muscle. Jingo, you're catching on quick. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So, Viagra. Okay. It's uh, known for relaxing smooth muscle. And relaxing the esophagus is kind of the whole point here. You're getting warmer. But there's a specific part of the esophagus we're interested in here. The lower esophageal sphincter, or LES for short. LES. Okay, like the bouncer at the club making sure nothing gets in that's not supposed to. That's a great way to put it. The LES is that doorway between the esophagus and the stomach. Now with megasophagus, that LES, often way too tight, like trying to get into the most exclusive club in town, nothing's getting past. But sildenafil, it relaxes that LES, lets the food through. Exactly, instead of a muscle traffic jam, things start flowing the way they should. Okay, now that is just wild. But hold on, we gotta talk about what this actually looks like for the dogs, right? 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 Did it actually work? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? <laughs> and thankfully, the early results are looking pretty darn promising. <laughs> Tell me we're not just talking about a handful of dogs, though, because sometimes those early studies. You're right to be cautious, but no, this wasn't just a couple pups. One study we looked at at a Washington State University, they actually had some pretty significant findings. Like what? Give me the good stuff. Well, they found that a good chunk of the dogs who got sildenafil, they saw a noticeable drop in how often they were regurgitating, like significantly less. Okay, now that's got to be huge, right? I mean, for the dogs and their humans. 
less regurgitation, less discomfort. Hopefully they can keep more food down. Exactly. And less chance of those complications like that aspiration pneumonia we talked about. Which is terrifying. Let's be real. No one wants to see their dog go through that. Absolutely not. But it gets better. The WSU study, they even had some dogs actually gaining weight while they were on the sildenafil. Wait, really? So it's not just about them keeping food down. They're actually absorbing the nutrients. That's what it's looking like. Yeah. Because the food's actually making it to their stomachs where it's supposed to be. They're finally able to digest and, you know, use that energy. I bet that was music to the researchers' ears, seeing those pups put on some healthy weight. Oh, they were over the moon from what I read. One of the articles even mentioned how surprised the researchers were. Like, they weren't expecting quite that level of improvement. Which just goes to show, right, there's always something new to learn. But we gotta be real, this is just one study. Sildenafil's not a miracle cure. Right. It's way too early to make those kinds of claims. We need more research, bigger studies, longer-term data. Exactly. Speaking of long-term, though, gotta ask the question on everyone's mind. Side effects. Of course, that's always the balance, right? <laughs> Especially when we're talking about our furry family members. We want them to feel better, not worse. So what's the good news on that front? What did research show? Well, the good news is that, at least in the studies we've got so far, sildenafil was generally well tolerated, particularly at the dosages they were using for megasophagus. Very few side effects reported, and even those were pretty mild. That is reassuring to hear. But I imagine getting that dosage right is going to be key here, right? Yeah. One size fits all probably doesn't apply. Not a chance. That's where working closely with your vet is absolutely critical. They're going to consider all the individual factors. Your dog's size, how severe their megasophagus is, any other health issues they've got going on. It's about finding that sweet spot, the safest and most effective dose for your pup. So as much as we love a good, simple solution... Seems like managing megasophagus, even with this potential new tool, it's still a multi-pronged approach. 100%. It's about giving these dogs the best possible support. And sildenafila, it's just one piece of that puzzle. The research you shared, it made that really clear. Those other management techniques we talked about, they're still super important. Diet, feeding position, all of that. Because sometimes it's about more than just a medication. It's about making it physically easier for them to eat. Exactly. Like, imagine trying to swallow a mouthful of dry kibble when your esophagus is basically rebelling. Not going to end well. Yeah, no thanks. So we're talking about making some adjustments there. For sure. Liquid diets can be a game changer for some of these dogs. Or even just switching to a more, like smoothie consistency with their food it makes a world of difference and then there's the actual feeding process oh right like those raised food bowls right letting gravity do some of the work precisely anything to give gravity a helping hand and smaller more frequent meals that can make a difference too instead of overwhelming the esophagus with a huge load it's like okay little bits at a time you got this it really makes you appreciate how complex something as basic as eating really is it really does and how much we still don't know, which is what makes this whole sildenafil thing even more mind-blowing when you think about it. No kidding. Who'd have thought that a drug developed for, well, let's just say a completely different purpose, could end up helping dogs with this serious condition live better lives? It's remarkable, really. It speaks to the interconnectedness of things, you know? And it makes you wonder what other unexpected treatments are out there just waiting to be discovered for both our furry friends and for us humans. That is a very good question and a perfect place to leave things for our listeners to ponder. This has been an incredible deep dive, truly, from what even is megasophagus to exploring a potential new treatment that, let's face it, no one saw coming. Thanks for taking this journey with me today. This is why I love doing what we do. Anytime. The surprises never end, that's for sure.